Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of DadCast. I am your host. Well, I'm not a host. I'm just JP. Joining with Nick, who's the other <laughs> host. How are you, Nick? I'm good. Just like you. I'm just Nick. You're just Nick. Just, <laughs> just JP and Nick on DadCast. We, we've got we've got Hopkins on. Hopkins yeah. is the host. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we do. We do. I was just about to introduce him. Uh, but first, this episode is brought to you locally by KMVU Fox 26. Thank you very much. Um, as Nick mentioned, we have a couple guests on the show today uh, making another return. The man, the front man who's been, you know, everywhere and done everything. Mr. Brian Hopkins of Elvis Monroe. How are you, Brian? I'm good. Thanks. Good to see you guys. Yeah, absolutely. And the man of the hour, Mr. Country Superstar (laughs) himself, Joe Nichols. How are you, sir? Welcome to DadCast. Fantastic, man. Thank you all very much. I appreciate you having me today. Absolutely. We appreciate taking the time and coming on. So uh, the premise here of DadCast, of course, is uh, we take like to talk our journey and path of being fathers and everything else. And I must forewarn you, Joe, um, on this show, we do tend to go off the rails sometimes. And by sometimes, I mean pretty much every <laughs> single episode. So uh, just yeah. there, just so you know, uh, right of passage, the very first question, we already know the answer, but we got to ask it anyway. Joe Nichols, are you a dad? Absolutely. Proud dad of three. Three. And awesome. uh, boys, yeah, yeah. girls, all girls. All yeah. girls. Ooh. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's got to be. I got two girls, so I I, I get your I, I get your plight, man. Um, what are their ages? Uh, seven, nine, and 23. And we even have a, a female, uh, or even our dog is a female. So, yeah, we uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's full. I don't even get a say in that. No, you don't, man. You, I guess that's when the tours come out and you, you have to breathe a little bit easier. You know, escape all that, yeah. that estrogen happening. Yeah. You know, the language changes, you know, when I get on the road, uh, with the guys, I, I say things like, you know, who's got to go TT. <laughs> right. <laughs> and then when I get home, kind of the opposite happens. I find myself dropping F bombs at the house and <laughs> I'm like, Oh my God. <laughs> got to get my road and home a little a little better. I got a D D bus, oh, as my wife likes to call it. Oh man, that that's that's a funny story. Uh, I don't yeah. have that problem. I just slip up all the time, regardless. Yeah, I have I have an eighteen month old, so f bombs are just flying like crazy right now. He's jumping off yeah. couches. Oh man, they, the first the first <laughs> time those uh, those little lips go, uh, well, they say something really inappropriate like GD or. F bomb or something, and they're a three year old. You're like, oh, dad failure right here. It's yeah, bad. hopefully we can get so, playing that on grandma or something. So I'm a big fan of Dick's Sporting Goods, right? <laughs> so I take my, my, I take the baby to Dick's, and now his favorite word is Dick. <laughs> <laughs> So we're, we're a grandma and grandpa's. He's all dick, dick. I'm like, no, Liam, no. It's funny you mention that, ah. Nick, because uh, my son, he's 11 years old now, but about three or four years ago, you know, he's in that six, seven year old. Uh, we'll drive. We got a dick sporting goods right next to the house. And uh, he'd always say, Dad, can we go to that store? And I says, what store? Dick's. And he'd like giggle. I'm like, what, 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 what's the problem? What store? Tell me. And, and he refused to say the word because he knew that as a a naughty word and there's no way he was going to say that in front of dad at seven years old so uh, i yeah, tease I him know. about it every time we'll, we'll drive i mean we drive by it literally every single day and I, hey sawyer look, yeah. look look it's dicks it, dad shut up <laughs> <laughs> my uh my most recent one my uh seven-year-old just just got me the other day she was doing something and told her sister i got big balls you know and i thought oh my god that's probably not something she heard from heather that's probably something. no she was <laughs> she listening to the basketball game or something she was listening to the local <laughs> classic rock station and acdc came yeah. on <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> old school brian uh, so yeah. this this is a uh, actually very surprising to me we're uh gosh about five minutes in already and you haven't said a word no you yeah. know what? That, that's pretty impressive man but but hey. but brian i'm gonna give you the conch man yeah Oh yeah. You know, um, it's crazy. Cause what I thought was really cool, uh, about what's going, you know, Joe just put out a new record and you had your entire family in the, in your video. I mean, I was, I was tuning in because you were dropping this video, um, of home run and the entire family, Heather and the girls and, and who else was in the video? If you don't mind me asking. My uh, my mother and my sister, my mom um, uh, is 
in Rogers, Arkansas. My little sister has Down syndrome. They've never been in one of my videos before. So it's kind of a new deal for them to, to be the star of the show. All the girls that had you know their own hair and makeup moments and the director hollering action and cut. They were they were just kind of super into that. So my mom, my sister, my wife, and uh, my two younger girls, my 23-year-old didn't didn't get to make it down. Oh wow. We you know, we've been friends for a while now, which is really yeah. cool. Uh I feel really lucky to Me too, you know, man. Dude, I'm serious. Like we've been friends for so long now and and um I was a fan. I mean, growing up you and watching you growing up, I listened to Merle Haggard, my dad would sing it, and then to see you on stage doing Merle and the stories that you shared. You know, it was really great. But to hear this right now, knowing I didn't know your sister had Down syndrome. And I said, I thought, who's that beautiful girl in this video? And I had to ask and I wait till this moment. Um, it, that, that's awesome. Uh, I have not She very similar situation, my aunt, and she grew up in our house. Um, she was uh, we called her Aunt Susie and she loved cleaning and taking care of us and making sure that, that we were good. And to this day, she's so proud of everything that I've done. And I'm like, I haven't done that much, Aunt Susie. And she's like, oh, no, but I see you on TV. You're right. <laughs> you know, I get to go to shows and see people. Actually, she was at the show with you in Grants Pass. My mom and dad brought her out there and uh, she happened to be there and was in the stand. So that was really cool. So. That's I applaud, and I I knew that uh, you had said that it was a situation where, you know, you you were never going to do that. I even read that somewhere as well that you were never going to do that, but that was a perfect scenario, you know. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's it, it's always been kind of a, um, you kind of understood, you know, making videos. You never really want to put a girlfriend in there or a wife in there or anything like that because. 100% of the time you're going to break up right after that and you're going to have to live with that video forever. <laughs> so, yeah. so we've avoided that for a lot of years, but, um, but this one got, got a chance, like I said, to put, put Heather and the girls in there, but, but I, it was a big deal for, for my mom and my sister. Like I said, they kind of get to see a little bit of my career, a little bit, you know, from within, but, um, but to be the stars of the show, that was really cool. That was really cool for me to kind of see the, the look of awe on their faces, like I said, when they're behind the scenes and the makeup and the attention to them. And I just thought that was really cool. That's, that's really amazing. And yeah. you, they love you. And uh, I'm bringing my dad and brother to Las Vegas to record in the next like month. Uh, we have a song called forever family. We actually played it for the first time with you when on one of their shows uh, in Henderson, and that moment I went, Oh, I got to have my brother on there. Well, I just surprised my dad and said, dad, you know, I thought about it. You never got to go in the studio. I brought you out on stage now, but you've never been in the studio and I'm going to, you're going to put those headphones on and you got to, got to get that part. So I need you to practice. Here's what it is. <laughs> yeah. Oh, nervous right now. So <laughs> it's that bringing family in and, and, getting to be a part of this, this that little glimpse, but I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for my dad or my brother, you know, kind of pushing me. And they were the ones that, that pursued this first. And I just took it further, you know? So yeah, that's really great that, that you had the opportunity to share that as well. You know? Yeah, That's really amazing. And speaking of uh, new albums and music, uh, Mr. Joe Nichols, let's talk a little bit about that. Uh, we're very, very fresh off a brand new release. And uh, we're yep. going to do something we don't normally do on this particular episode. As soon as I am done, when we're done chatting with each other, I'm going to edit it up and I'm going to throw it out to the world. So everyone gets a fresh glimpse and, you know, they don't have to wait three months for this to come out. Let's talk about the process and this new album and everything, everything. Let's talk about it. Let's promote it. Let's let okay. the world know. So tell us, how's yeah, the process? Well, you know, after, gosh, over a year of, you know, kind of compiling songs, recording, you know, um, plugging in two or three days here in the studio, lots of song meetings, lots of direction meetings. Um, you know, when you complete the album, you're like, oh, my God, thank goodness that that's done. 
it's just such a kind of a long grueling kind of process and can, sometimes can be very tedious and, and, um, I don't know, it can kind of just really feel like a huge burden lifted off you when you're done with the album, but not, uh, not too long after that, you feel this immense fear, like, Oh my God, what did I leave undone? Is the, what did, what did I not do on this record? Is that going to turn out the way I, I think it was going to turn out? Um, and then of course, release day, you know, after starting the process a year and a half ago, release day, you're like, I hope this is not a complete failure. I hope people hear what I've heard. And I hope, you know, people like this album. Um, this is an incredible fear. So a range of emotions from excitement to a grind to, oh my God, I can't believe this is finally here. This day is finally here. I, you know, is there some, like I said, is there something I could have corrected on this album? Something I, you know, left undone. But um, so far, so good, man. The, the reviews have been great. Um, the fans' reviews have been outstanding. You know, radio seems to be really, really great. Uh, like I said, a, a scary process can be very rewarding at the same time. Yeah, absolutely. Now, you mentioned yeah, I, that. I love it. I, I downloaded it the other day when it came out. And it was on my, it's on my playlist for the gym. Listen to it twice. Phenomenal. Oh, man. It's good stuff, Thank man. You. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. How was I want to see tonight just that song uh, right when you come in your vocal that tone that it just takes me back to being a kid and it's just so pure and I turned to Nicole I was like oh man like the hair stood up on my arms and and, and uh, to be honest man um, I've told you this before I did the same thing Nick did. Like I listened to it at the gym a couple times through right when it came out. And in 2018, your, your last album, and the, the one you had the EP in between that, mm -hmm. and the, that last album, that was the soundtrack to my relationship with Nicole. I mean, we shared that was something that pulled us closer together. Plus it didn't help that you put a mic in face, you know, at, at at T-Mobile and she was on the big <laughs> and I was like, thanks, man. You know, <laughs> that, that sound. So I'm looking forward to this album and making it feel that same way, marking the time when the world started to come to life again. So, um, you know, I appreciate it. I'm looking forward to see how, how this journey takes me. So. I know, man. Thank you, brother. I appreciate yeah, it. Very on words. Yes. Um, How was the process of recording this and this whole uh, during the pandemic? You said it was a year and a half ago. So I, I'm assuming you got started right at the beginning of all when the world went to hell. Yeah. Um, gosh, Benny Brown called me maybe in August or, or September of 2020. And I had been in the in the studio kind of doing, you know, piddling a little bit, kind of just exploring what I want to do next, kind of maybe finding a direction I wanted to go with this album, you know, contemplating in my mind, like, boy, am I just, am I too country for the world today? Um, has my day kind of passed me by because of that fact? And I just, one of those traditional guys that we think about 15 years from now, they go, Oh, I remember that guy. So I was kind of pondering all these things after uh, the divorce kind of settled with red Bow. And, um, and out of the blue one day, Benny Brown called me and said, I've started a new label. He, he is the one that started broken bow, the, the label group broken bow. And, um, and he sold it, I think, in 2017, right around the, uh, before my album came out, Never Gets Old. So I was kind of in an arranged marriage a little bit with, with Red Bow at that point, you know, because Benny and I were the ones that, uh, well, Benny was kind of more in my camp than anybody at that label. And, and, uh, and like I said, after that divorce kind of settled a little bit, you know, I just had a lot of questions in my mind, like, what do I want to do now? The world's a little crazy. It was 2020. And, um, and like I said, he called me out of the blue one day and said, I've started another label. I want you to join me and let's put some country music out there. And I was like, put me in coach. I'm ready to play. <laughs> and, uh, so we started the song kind of collection process, like I said, in, in the early fall, late summer of 2020. And, uh, man, from that point to here, just like I said, that right. whole range of emotions from, you know, excited to put this together to, you know, right in the thick of it, like, man, we're got to get a groove on these two or three songs I'm having vocal trouble with. And how do I make this sound like me? And am I borrowing too much from the demo? And, you know, it's, 
like I said, it's just a range of emotions. You go from, you know, extreme happiness to just doubting yourself completely to happiness again and just grateful to be here and all that that stuff. And like I said, leading up to the album release day, and just like all of that compiles, you know, into one day. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God, this is, this is finally dropping and I, I can't, you know, I, I'm kind of, I don't want to look. I'm kind of like this on the reviews and the, and the fan interaction. Like, what are they going to say? Did so you it, find uh, the process was different for you as you, uh, you normally do because it fell during this whole COVID thing or was it just, you know, business as usual for you? The only thing that I, that I can tell is really different is uh, we had a lot more time to go in the studio in bunches. Usually we're touring pretty heavily. And so you have to find a day or two days here and there throughout months that you're like, man, I could really use a day off here. And instead you're kind of going to studio a little burned. And so it kind of takes you a little longer vocally to kind of get to a good place. So I was a little better rested and we had a little more free time, a little wiggle room on the schedule to kind of go in and, and do more, you know, the versus years that we've tried to make an album, tried to get things done. And it's just slower because of the lack right. of opportunities. Do, uh, do your girls, the little ones, the younger ones, do they realize dad is uh, country music royalty and have they used that to their advantage yet? <laughs> I don't think that's the way they'd put it. <laughs> uh, I, I think that they have an idea of what I do. I think my youngest one is just now kind of starting to come online with the idea a little bit more um, because a lot of her friends are big fans and you know, they'll ask her to ask me questions at school. My nine year old, like <laughs> my friend wants to know what about this song? And <laughs> was it fun making this video or, you know, do you know Taylor Swift? <laughs> <laughs> uh, like, Hey, I don't know Taylor Swift that well, but I know Dolly Parton very well. And they're like, who's Dolly Parton? Oh. Like, well, she's better. She's bigger oh, than Taylor man. Swift. <laughs> <laughs> she, she's the original Taylor Swift. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny you answered my now i was like do you know taylor swift because you know, okay. <laughs> i know dolly parton yes you do dude i'd have dolly on this show that would be amazing nick that would be amazing oh my gosh, gosh. heck i just want to that's zoom right. with her to say i had that experience forget the show that's right so that's that, a great person man i'll see you right there brian Yes, sir. So I, I know this, this episode's about, uh, you know, we're trying to focus on, on Joe and his kids and whatnot, but I got to ask you, since I have you here with us, um, yeah. you are in the process of making a new Elvis Monroe album as we sit here and speak, correct? Yes, I am. And, we're, in, we're in mix mode right now, and so I'm very excited. And how's yeah. the process going? How, how, how long until I can pop that in my player of insert and I can rock out to some Elvis Monroe? Brand new stuff. Well, we're in the middle of, uh, like I said, we're in the mix in mix mode, and I wish I had an answer of how long this takes. Yeah, I uh, doing doing this on on our own has is a process. Um, you know, it, not not having we have a studio, but we work with other people, so it's you know working within their schedule. But it's been a blast. Like taking these new songs that Benny and I wrote is very exciting. We may have a home for it right now. Like I mentioned before we jumped on here, right. you know, I got a call from a label and said, I, this is where I would love to, you know, I'd love to put this album out. And uh, so that's exciting. And um, let's see, let's see what happens. So uh, eventually I will have an answer. And for right now, I mean, like Joe had just mentioned, I, I'm in that mode where, wow, I'm, I'm excited about it. But then I'm like, will people be excited about this as well? You right. know, this is my, you know, um, did, did I, did, I'm like on my, one of my favorite songs. Should I go in and redo that? Like, you know, I, if you give me too much time, I'm going to sit there and keep painting over the painting and, and, and never stop. Um, somebody has to yell, okay, that's it. Let's, let's move on. Let's go to the next step. So. Is that typical uh, for artists? Or, I mean, for both you guys um, that you've seen that you'll, you'll overthink it and, you know, you'll have a perfect product, but decide, Oh, could too much time on my hands. I want to redo it. Is that, is that something that you guys go through a lot? Not a lot, but I think a little bit for me, a little bit of the fear of like, is it the, is this the right thing? Right. You know, 
I did the right thing here, you know, because, you know, this is coming from, from me. And then I have friends like Joe, who, like I said, I look up to and, and I hear his stuff and I'm like, Oh, this is moving. Do I have that? Is this going to do that? Is this going to be the same reaction, you know? And right now having possibly a home, putting it out there and having a team behind this record, I'm excited about that and having an opportunity for people to hear it. So I can say from what you've sent me that I've heard, Oh my gosh. Like, yeah. Yeah. It's and ditto. You, you, yeah. we had you I, up here a couple guitar months player, ago, though, man, you might want to find another. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Ben, I'm, One I'm of these uh, times Ben's got to jump on. I'm so looking at, himself. yes, I'm looking at you, Ben. <laughs> We've had Brian on probably, yeah. I don't know, 17 times. Uh, and Ben, <laughs> where you at, man? Come on. Yeah. Where you at? <laughs> where you at? This Wait, is- we've had Joe Nichols on. Where you at, Ben? Yeah. Come on. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of Joe Nichols, what do we got coming up for touring? We got summer. The world's opened up again. Yeah, you know, um, we we've got a lot of lot of shows scheduled. Actually, I looked. I went over the schedule with my tour manager the day before yesterday, and I had not realized what the year looked like until we we spoke. and And it's going to be quite busy. You know, with the new record with with new music, we're always you know going to be at radio, kind of doing promotion, um, doing a lot of interesting ideas to create a lot more visibility. Um, but the touring schedule, man, is going to be in that 75 or 80 or 80 plus dates, which is, that's a pretty heavy year for a 45 year old guy with, <laughs> with, with a couple of small kids at home. Uh, that's, but it's, you know, with, with, like I said, with new music, it's, you know, creates a lot of excitement, you know, and a lot of high visibility and, and you kind of got to capitalize on, on that at the moment, but, you know, circle back what, what we were talking about before, you know, in the, um, uh, on the creative process of correction, I know that I, I could probably correct myself over and over into having a, the most bland corrected version of a record ever. And I really do have to have a, a person like Mickey Jack Cones or Derek George in the studio to kind of rein me in a little bit because a word will bother me and I'll, I'll redo that word. And then the next word doesn't go right with it. So I'll fix that word. And then, all of a sudden the song, I, well, I think my tone's better in those two corrected words. So let me just sing the whole thing again. And I can do that into a point of where it just sounds like, eh, it's, you know, not, not to use the word too correct, but it's too corrected. Right. Um, and so I, I can really, I could be in the studio for the rest of my life and never complete an album if it were up to me. <laughs> just from the fact that never being satisfied and, always thinking, oh, I think this can be better. I think this could be better. I think it could be more, you know, the tone could be better or the, or the licks could be a little, you know, fresher, you know, I, I could do that forever, but, but it's good to have a sense of completion, you know, and sometimes it takes other people in the room to go, you're, you've done enough. Stop right there. <laughs> well, the silver lining is, is you could put out a compilation album of all the songs and edits that got put on the scrap floor, right? <laughs> I don't know about that. Yeah. We've, we could put a lot of stinkers out there for sure. A lot of stuff that didn't make the record. <laughs> hey, Nick, I, I, I forgot, I forgot that this is a, a, a shortened version of the podcast and we're like, we're like, we're getting close to being out of time already. And this kind of upsets me. So I'm going to ask Joe one more question and I'm assuming you put together a fast five. Okay, yeah, good. All right, Joe. Uh, he, this is a segment we like to do. Fast five. He has five random questions. Um, they're typically the exact same questions every single time. Hopefully, Nick uh, mixed it up a little bit this time. And hopefully, my question for you right now doesn't take one of his away like it did the other day. But here we go. I talk too much. Can you tell? Radio guy. Here we are. If you could give one piece of advice to any new father out there on being a father and what to do, what would that be? What advice would you give? Ooh. Um, somebody asked me this question not too long ago and I haven't thought about it a little bit. I think no advice or no comment whatsoever is sometimes better than a bad comment or bad advice. You know, with, with my kids, especially my oldest, my 23 year old, when she has a, a question or needs advice, man, if I don't know the right thing to say, I also won't say anything until I think about it for a while, you okay. know, because if I say something immature or something, you know, knee jerk or, or something I haven't thought through, then she's going to have the same kind of thoughts. So I would say to any father, um, 
just be careful of what you say, what your first reaction is, because the kids are going to pick up on that. Just think it through because you want them to think it through. Good answer. All right, Nick. Awesome. Yeah. All right. So what is your favorite venue to play? Ooh, that is a fantastic question. I, man, I don't know if I have a favorite venue. Billy Bob's is always great. Hey, uh, Billy Bob's in Fort Worth. You, I asked you this question because I What's wanted that? to know. When I, went, when I met you for the first time, we were riding in my truck, going to the mall. And I said, <laughs> what was your favorite venue so far that you've played? And it was, you told me, Bakersfield. I sat Oh, yeah. Earl Haggard, it was like, go ahead, please finish that. Because you told this story and it stuck with me till this day. And I think Dirks was on the show with you and they were putting out the statues and go ahead. Well, that, yeah, that was um, at Buck Owens Crystal Palace uh, there you go. out there in Bakersfield, California. Buck unveiled these 10 giant bronze statues of 10 country icons, Garth Brooks, George Jones, Willie Nelson, um, Buck Owens, Merle Haggard, and uh, you know, this big ceremony it was the night that Garth proposed to Tricia, and um, it was just really cool. It was, I was there with, with Dirk, Dirks Bentley, and I think we were two of the only new guys, newer guys that were there to kind of represent the songs of these icons. And, and um, it was the first time I met Merle Haggard, <laughs> it was a trip, it was so fun, you know, he was um. He pulled me aside. We, we sat in his car and listened to some of his new music that he had just, you know, kind of recorded that week. And I was just, I found myself just sitting there going, am I really in this car right now talking to Merle Haggard about his new music? And he's telling me about what he's kept up with me on. And, and then we, you know, the only person there that had a bus was Dirk. So I think I flew in for that show. And, and a lot of, you know, the guys at George Jones and, and of course, Buck lived there. And Merle drove his car down from, from Shasta and, or from Redding, California. To, and so Dirk's, tour manager invited everybody you know all of us artists to go up and hang on his bus and see he was the only one with a bus so we went up there it was so funny uh it was ray benson uh merle me dirks a few other other artists i don't think george was up there yet but all of us started talking and merle pulled out this giant crown royal bag out of his pocket and then this giant pipe looked like a Sherlock Holmes kind of pipe <laughs> thing out of his, out of his pocket. And it was weed, he put, you know, <laughs> this crown Royal bag was full of weed and this big, long pipe, you know, he just kind of started packing this huge bowl. And I was just kind of looking around like at Dirks and Dirks was like, what am I going to say? <laughs> and he just started lighting this thing up and, and instantly, well, like within two minutes, this, the, the, the air was so thick with smoke. It was just kind of like one of these, you know, <laughs> comical from a movie kind of scene. We're doing this. And I know instantly that, uh, that Dirks and I both had the same thought. Oh my God, I'm high. I'm high with Merle Haggard. And I had no idea I would even participate in anything like this. And, uh, but they, they told all kinds of great stories, Bob Will's stories, uh, music stories. Ray Benson was awesome. Uh, and just listen to Merle Haggard as he kind of toked. And we just kind of sat there with, with like a couple of little kids in a candy store, just watching just our hero talk about, you know, his life. It was incredible. I think that's what happened. <laughs> <laughs> that's great, that's man. Amazing. That's I can remember it. Yeah. <laughs> that's the, the story too. And you went into more detail, which was awesome. But if you would have asked me that day that you told me that story, like what my favorite moment was uh, at, you know, venue that I had played or whatever, I would have said the night before this moment, you tell me the story because I got to share the stage with, with, uh, well, I think Cassidy Pope was on the show. Um, Brett Eldridge, Thompson Square and you, and this was the first time we were actually getting to talk. But my favorite moment was when the promoters and radio tried to find where everybody was at Thompson squares on stage and they can't find anyone because everyone was hanging out in Elvis Monroe's dressing room. We're all in there just <laughs> dressing, sending videos to Randy and, you know, just, it was hilarious. Well, that moment was my favorite. I'm like, this is my favorite moment until you and I were in the truck and you told me that story because I had 
so many moments where I had heard you on the radio or watched your videos. And like I said, you reminded me of old school, where I, what I grew up on, but done in this cool way. And, and I'm thinking, this is the coolest moment. Like I'm, I'm in my truck with you and you're telling me this story. And it, so those are my two favorite moments and they came back to back. Nice. I never <laughs> thought, honestly, I would ever hear the word uh, Bakersfield be put in such a good light. To be perfectly honest, I've, I've, I've been there. I've driven through it many, many times. I grew up in, yeah. in California and all. All right, Nick, you got some more questions, okay. man. Yeah. So you've collabed with Blake Shelton on the new album. You've got Sir Mix a lot. If you could do a collab with any artist, who would it be? Anybody you haven't done one with? Living or dead? Ooh. Living Ooh. or dead? Ooh. Wow. Oh, yeah. man. Switch it up Merle. a little bit. <laughs> I'd have to go with Merle. You know, that he was my all-time, he is my all-time favorite um, singer. I, I, I would just, I would kind of feel tickled to death if, if you know, I could do a Merle uh, collaboration. Keith Whitley is another one. I think probably mm -hmm. Keith. Um, that's a tough one, man. There's so many, you know, Patsy Klein. I would love to do a duet with Patsy oh, Klein. Man. Back, back that far. That would be cool. Honestly, yeah, I was man. hoping for some naughty by nature, old Joe Nichols. Old <laughs> <laughs> Kurt Cobain. That's it. <laughs> Kurt Cobain. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Okay. Favorite meal to cook for your kids? Favorite meal. Man, I'm a steak guy, and they, I got two little meat eaters. I got a seven nice. and nine year old that, <laughs> The little girls that, uh, man, when they see a good medium to medium rare ribeye on the, on the plate, they will leave nothing for the dog. It, <laughs> it's, uh, they, they can plow through a 16 ounce ribeye like a grown, grown ass man. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I love Very it. Cool. So nice steak on the grill. So, speaking so what, of what steak, you... I'm sorry. Sorry, Nick. I didn't mean to interrupt. Um, and, and this is actually a question for Brian on regards to steak. Have you ever eaten at Bavette's inside the park MGM yet? Me? Yes. No. I Joe, Joe tried to take me to a, a really nice steakhouse once. And uh, I remember we bounced around like two or three steakhouse because they wouldn't let me in with a hat on. And I refused to <laughs> hat on. My hair was, you know, my mohawk yeah. was plastered to my head. With <laughs> my hat on, I'm like, I can't sit like this. It's not just like taking my hat off. He's like, I understand. Let's go. So we went, he took me to a steakhouse and I don't eat steak. So I had like a $25 side salad and I'm thinking, <laughs> oh my God, this is 25 bucks. And he's like, Brian, eat what you want. I got this. I'm like, okay, I'll have this salad and bread. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> well, if you ever get the opportunity, uh, Brian, you live there. So I know it's easily attainable. Joe, okay. if you're ever in Vegas inside the park MGM, it's called Bavette's Steakhouse. I am a connoisseur. Okay. I have eaten everywhere you could possibly find to find the best steak on the planet. And I ain't going to lie, man, that Chicago, I think it's 20, 16 ounce cut. It's the best steak I've ever had in my entire life. And there you go, Bavette's. There's a free shout out for you. Um, uh, it's like an $80 uh, steak, man, and, and worth uh, every uh, single penny my gosh in fact every time in vegas now it used to be to hang out with brian now it's i have to get one of those steaks it's <laughs> it's amazing nick you got more i do okay what's your proudest dad moment oh man i got several um my oldest graduated from washington state with a uh, i believe a 3.9 gpa she's a nice. incredibly smart girl and um i gotta say i'm pretty proud of that i'm i'm from a family that that we were all high school dropouts. She's the first one that I know of in my entire family, entire, my, my entire bloodline that has graduated uh, college. And so that was an incredible proud dad for me. Um, and my two youngest, um, my nine-year-old has gotten the character award at her school uh, a couple of times now. And, um, I, you know, just several moments like that, you know, mm -hmm. the recognition from school for being good kids my seven-year-old as well, getting getting an award like that from a school for being in Christ black character. And uh, they go to a little uh, private Christian school here in Bullard, Texas. And and like I said, they they get these little awards and just tickled me to death. You know, that they're good little people and they they take care of their classmates and they, they're kind and ask questions and curious. And I'm oh, sorry about that, fellas. 
Uh, but I think that's my, my proud dad moments right there. It's amazing, isn't it? That's awesome. Oh. All right. Last question. You I could have a banner with anything on it. Banner? What would it be and why? A banner? Not a billboard like this a, time? Or a, oh, sorry. <laughs> billboard. My bad. Billboard. <laughs> billboard. Ah. Billboard. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> a billboard with anything on it. Like, uh, man, that's a, those are good questions. I, I don't know. I'd have to think about that for a minute. A billboard with anything on it. Mm, boy, I don't know. I don't know. St. Louis don't Cardinals, World hey, Series hey, champs. I, what, I mean, no, it, it'd probably it'd probably be some some kind of catchphrase or some kind of lesson I've learned over the years. Like, be careful of the toes you step on today because they might be connected to the ash you're kissing tomorrow. That's probably- <laughs> <laughs> That's, all right, you just got the best one so far. So the reason we asked that is when we first started Dadcast, I bought a billboard on the busiest street in Medford, Oregon, that said the number one parenting podcast in the world. <laughs> we had like two episodes, <laughs> like two episodes in where it's just me and JP talking. <laughs> that's fan, That's fantastic promotion. That's, it it was. was awesome. Yeah, I got it was the, pretty awesome. You know, we're and, not bad and, parents. And here we are by any means, you know, but the best parenting podcast in the world. That was a yeah. bold statement at the time. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, so I got one thing for Brian real quick. Okay. Yes. So for the new Elvis Monroe album, yes. picture of Tiffany Thiessen on the cover. I kissed a girl. <laughs> Done. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I, I do remember we were, Joe, we were playing the winery in California together. And by the way, thank you for letting us. He gives us the house because they had to leave. And there's a, the house you guys got to stay in. They had like 13 or 14 rooms and we're running around like little kids. But I remember my phone blowing up during sound check and it's Mike. And, it, you know, it, it, Mike is uh, Joe's tour manager. And I'm like, what's wrong? I'm thinking maybe we're running long or something and because he sounds pissed off. And he realized that that was me in the episode of <laughs> they, uh, kissing him, uh, Tiffany Amber. And, and he's like, you asshole. That was my girl. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, so sorry, dude. So, like, yeah, <laughs> that's hilarious. Okay, before we end this thing, man, I, I just wanted to share something with you guys. It's right on the uh, the dad thing. Uh, you touched on it a second ago, Joe, about how the little things and how uh, with the daughters and and the relationship and how it just little things make those moments. I, I got this letter right here that my my little girl wrote, and I'm gonna read it word for word for you. It says to my dad. So much of me is made from what I learned from you. You may not or can carry me on your back, but I know you will always carry me in your heart. It doesn't matter how old, big, and strong. I will always be your baby girl. Thank you for being my dad. Love you always and forever. And she put this little daddy on her shoulders picture or me on her shoulders. Awesome. I am highly considering getting this entire thing tattooed on me somewhere. You should. Isn't that, <laughs> that just is awesome? I mean, I almost teared up and I got the heebie jeebies just reading that to you guys. And yeah. I mean, that right there, man, it's what it's all about being a dad. Talk about yeah. a billboard right there. Yeah, man. Absolutely. Right? That's good stuff. <laughs> and then JP, they turn 17. Yep. They certainly do. <laughs> they certainly do. That's why I'll have that tattoo to be like, remember, honey, remember. <laughs> exactly. You wrote those words. Those were and yours. Drive the car and wreck it on yeah. your second day. Look at that. And- <laughs> yeah. That's exactly right. He is your insurance company about it. Yeah. Yeah. He is Joe Nichols. That is Brian Hopkins. Uh, check out Joe's brand new music wherever you get your music. I'm sure it's available on every single platform out there, right? I hope so. Yeah, everywhere. It's called Good Day for Living. Yeah, Good man. Day for Living. And Brian, we are still anxiously awaiting that brand new Elvis Monroe music. We don't know when it's gonna happen. Hopefully sooner than later, but we are patiently waiting. Oh. I already came up with the title. Uh, We have the title of the album and it's uh, competing with giants. But um, yeah, so I'm excited. My my Tiffany Thiessen idea is just (laughs) crap. 
<laughs> that is hilarious. Uh, this episode has been brought to you locally by KMVU Fox 26. To everyone watching on the YouTube, thank you very much. Uh, please like it up, subscribe, comment. If you have any questions for Joe or Brian, set it down there in the comments. To everyone listening worldwide, thank you so much for your listenership. We appreciate you. We love you. We will see you all next week. Joe, once again, thank you for taking time out of your day. Um, oh, I have to add. I looked at your tour schedule. Not a single date. The closest you're getting to us is Montana. No, he's gonna be. In, <laughs> is he, He's gonna be in Oregon. Is he's he? A, well, it wasn't on that yeah. festival at JoeNichols.com. We're, we're festival up there with Miranda. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll actually be there. I was talking to Mike and uh, your manager about meeting up with you and possibly doing an in-person follow-up. Well, I feel like an asshole now. The website needs to be updated, maybe. <laughs> yeah, it's not, it's not on the website. <laughs> I do that every day. All right. And that is it, y'all. Thank you so much once again. We'll see you next week. Have a great rest of your day. See you.